What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this. Beautiful, delicious, smoky, crunchy, crispy skin pork belly. Cooked two different ways with two different sauces. Coming up! This is a pork belly. This is in fact a skin on pork belly, which is necessary if you want to get some crispy skin on your pork belly. I got this one from wildforkfoods.com because I can't really seem to find them locally, at least in this form. You know, at the Asian markets and the Mexican grocery stores, I can find little strips and chunks that have the skin on there, but not a full slab like this. But that may not be true for you. I've heard a lot of people in the comments saying that all the pork belly they find is skin on and they ask me if I remove it before I smoke it because most of the pork belly I cook on this channel is skin removed. So depending on where you live, you're gonna have to look around, maybe ask a local butcher. Again, check around at different styles of grocery store and if not you can always get them online and as you can see it is already out of the packaging and that's because last night I opened it up and I popped it on this wire rack in this pan here and let it sit in the fridge just like this uncovered and that's really gonna help start to dry out the skin which is very important for getting crispy skin pork belly and when it comes to getting that crispy skin there are a million different ways to go about it I've scoured the internet and seen dozens of different ways to go about getting that crispy skin some people like to wipe vinegar over the top some people like to poke a bunch of little holes throughout some people just cook it super hot and fast the whole time some cook it low and slow then pour hot oil on top some people just deep fry it or put it in a shallow fry many different ways to achieve the same result but today we're going to keep it simple we're going to cut this in half and try two separate methods one half is going to go on the offset smoker and one is going to go on the mini chud box so that being said let's cut this thing in half as you can see the overnight chill did a very nice job darkened up the meat a little bit and this is much drier i had to pat this thing dry when it came out of the packaging and now it is nice and dry so simply enough i'm going to just go right through the middle y'all Nothing to it. And when I cook these, I'm gonna be salting the skin really heavily to help dry out moisture, which is gonna add some seasoning to the meat if it penetrates all the way through. But in my experience, we're still gonna want some extra seasoning on the bottom side here. So let's hit it with a rub. Today, I'm going with some good old fashioned Chud Rub. On sale now at shopchuds.com. And we're just gonna get a nice coating all over this bottom side. And we wanna try really hard not to get any on the skin because that could mess up the color and negatively affect our puffage later on. But I'm gonna try and get the sides as much as I can. But again, I don't wanna move these too much because I don't want to risk getting stuff on the skin. So my sides may not be as perfect as always. Looking good to me. Let's fire up the pits. I sure hope two chimneys doesn't mean two boot snakes. That's a snake per boot. Offset here, we're gonna be aiming for a temperature of around 250 degrees. That way we get some really nice smoke flavor on there. We don't cook this thing too fast and we don't have to worry about the skin getting too crispy or anything right off the bat. But it's also at this stage, we're gonna go through and coat this thing with some table salt. Just all over this thing. This is what they do to whole hogs. And it's really gonna accomplish two things. One, it's going to keep the smoke off of the skin, which is gonna help preserve the color, make sure it doesn't turn all dark and rubbery. As well as all this salt will be pulling moisture out of the skin over the next few hours while this thing cooks and have no fear not much of this salt flavor will make it into the pork this is all going to come off once this thing comes up to temp it's mostly there as a protective barrier beautiful and same exact thing on the mini chud box here going meat side down skin side up with a nice liberal coating of some table salt. Kosher salt does work well, that's what we do down at Leroy and Lewis, but the table salt's a little bit finer, so you're gonna get better coverage. It's gonna work its way into the skin a little bit better, but if all you have is kosher salt, that will work just fine. Beautiful, same deal, 250, 275. We'll check back in in a little bit. About two hours later, this pork belly is coming off the pit. Ooh, very nice. This belly is rocking an internal temperature of about 160 degrees, so now it's time to take off this salt. And if you're lucky, it comes off in one piece. Pretty cool. Save that for a unique seasoning. Hashtag hog salt. And as you can see, that salt did its job of protecting that skin, keeping it look real nice. Ooh, feeling nice and dry, nice and tacky. Should crisp up very nice. 
Now I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time because everybody loves crispy pork belly, right? The only problem was I could never really find a method that worked super well for the backyard cook. And that's because I was always aiming for that super fluffy popcorn type skin that inflates and is all bubbly. And achieving that on a smoker is pretty hard. But then a few weeks back, I went up to Chicago for the Windy City Smokeout and I was right next to the boys from Hoodoo Brown. They're a fantastic barbecue joint based out of Connecticut. If you are anywhere in the Northeast or in Connecticut, you have to go check out Hoodoo Brown and tell them Chud sent you. Great guys, very fun and amazing food. And at that festival, they were serving some absolutely fantastic crispy skin pork belly. You can check out my video I did on Windy City if you want to see me eating an absurd amount of that stuff. And when talking to Tyler about how he cooks it, I brought up the fact that I'm always trying to get that super fluffy, puffy skin. And he says that that's not what they're aiming for. They're aiming for that nice glassy skin, something more similar to what you get on a whole hog. And that made a whole lot of sense to me. So after watching them cook belly for three days straight, I decided it was time to give it a try for myself and aim for that glassy skin that's still super crunchy, kind of sticky, and you still end up with some perfectly cooked pork belly. So that's what we're going to do with this one. At the festival, they smoked theirs on an offset just like I just did. They popped it in a pan on a wire rack, and then they put some water in the bottom of the pan and put it into a hot oven. So that's what we're going to do today. But instead of a hot oven, I'm just going to get this smoker fired up real hot. We're going to see if it works out. So I'm going to let this rest for a little bit while I get this thing up to about 350, maybe 400 degrees. And as for this belly on the old mini chud box here, ooh. How you doing? We are going to treat this one just like a whole hog, meaning I'm going to pull all this salt off. Much different color on this one. Probably because there's no wood smoke, just charcoal. And of course, all the flavors from the drippings coming out of this and hitting the coals. Oh, that looks lovely. So I'm going to pull this one off and let this rest for a minute as well while I get this pit fired up. Not too hot, probably around 325. Flip it over skin side down and that should crisp it up nicely. Well, wait, wait, let's bust out some sauces real quick. Starting with classic mop sauce. Starting with some butter, as well as one half of one yellow onion. Just let that cook down for a minute. Once cooked down and looking lovely, we're going to go in with a couple of tiny little garlic cloves and let that cook for just a little bit, a couple of minutes. Next up, one sliced up lemon, followed by some quiet vinegar and a little bit of cider vinegar as well. Once that comes up to a simmer, we're gonna go in with our spices, including some quiet sugar, some paprika, red chili flakes, granulated mustard, some chili powder, a little bit of MSG, some quiet pepper, a nice glug of some Worcestershire sauce, and a shot of some hot sauce for good measure. Looking good, smelling real nice. And our mop sauce is done. Now that our pit is back up to temp, on we go with our pork belly skin side down, right above the coals to get nice and crispy. And same thing over here. Pork belly on. I'm gonna fill this tray up with water. Pretty sure that's gonna help create some steam, which is gonna protect the meat side from overcooking while we wait for the skin to get nice and crispy. Beautiful. Next sauce we're gonna make is Sanjang, which is a Korean dipping sauce. I see it a lot of Korean barbecue restaurants and, and it's super flavorful, packed with umami, very savory, and just a great dipping sauce for meat and veg. Starting with a bowl and some gochujang and donjang. Starting out with a quarter cup of our donjong, which is a fermented soybean paste. Very flavorful. If you can't find this stuff, I'm sure miso would work just as well, but try to get the real stuff if you can. As well as a hefty spoonful of our gochujang, which is a spicy chili paste. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Sticky stuff. One finely sliced green onion in. Quarter cup minced onion, couple cloves of crushed garlic going in. Next up, two teaspoons of sesame oil, Beep. as well as two teaspoons of some honey, as well as two teaspoons of some toasted sesame seeds. Give that a nice mix, and our samjang is done. And I will link down below to the video where I got this recipe, if you want to see it in a little greater detail. Looking good to me. Checking in on our direct heat belly. Oh yeah, we're starting to get some crispage. Let's make a noise. And I've gone through once or twice as this has been cooking and hit it with the mop sauce just to help soften up the meat on the underside. Oh yeah. Oh yes please. Check back in in a bit. And the next sauce we're going to make is a vermouth jus, which is kind of like a pan sauce that you'd make after searing a steak with shallots and butter and deglazing that pan. It's oniony, it's got dry vermouth in it, and it should pair perfectly with our fatty pork belly. So, starting with a pan. We're going to go in with a nice knob of some butter as well as a whole shallot that I hit on the mandolin to get nice and thin. And we're just gonna let that cook down for a little bit. Smelling lovely already. And to be completely honest, I just Googled what sauces go well with crispy skin pork belly. And this is one of them that popped up. Never had it before, but looked really tasty. And once cooked down to the point where they're just about to start turning brown, we're gonna go in with our extra dry vermouth. 
The recipe then calls for two cups of homemade beef stock to let reduce by more than half. But I happen to have some of these lying around because the other day I was cleaning out the freezer and I took all my bones and made a big batch of bone stock. This is the recipe from Chef John slash Adam Ragusea about how to make demi-gloss, which is basically beef bones and chicken bones turned into a stock and then reduced all the way down, skimmed to fat, and you end up with these beautiful concentrated little nuggets of demi-gloss that are perfect for a pan like this. So, in we go. And because these are already concentrated, we really just need to melt them down and our sauce is almost done. Highly recommend checking this out. These things are great to have in the freezer. Just a great way to add a bunch of flavor to any sauce. And because of all the gelatin in the bones and in these stock cubes, this sauce is now gonna be extra velvety. And to finish it off, we're gonna hit it with some heavy cream. And once nicely combined, hit it with a little salt and some freshly cracked black pepper. Make sure to taste it for seasoning. Pass that through a strainer and our sauce is done. Make sure to press all that good juice out of there. Ooh, nice and thick. Beautiful. After about an hour and a half of hot and fast crisping, let's see how these bellies came out. Ooh, and this is the one fresh off the mini chud box. And I gotta say, these are both looking pretty good. Nice and crispy skin, although I gotta tell you a little story about what happened to this one, cause it looks kinda weird. So this is the one that was on the offset cooker and it was smoking away, cooking at like 400 degrees, looking beautiful. It was really looking perfect. It had that nice glassy top that's exactly what I was after. But it wasn't quite as far along as this one. So I got a little antsy and I pushed it up pretty close to the fire and I was only gonna leave it there for a few minutes when of course I got a phone call and got distracted and I came back out and it was completely black. Not ideal, but I know you guys love it when I make mistakes. So what I did is I took a knife and I scraped off all the char and it ended up looking like this. Still nice and crispy, but just not quite as pretty as it once was. It's a real shame. I think it'll still be quite tasty though. But that being said, I'm gonna let these rest because they are piping hot around 200 degrees internal temp. And once they cool down a bit, we'll slice on in. All right, let's see how these came out. We'll start with this one. Ooh, going through nice. And then beautiful crunch, not too shabby. And there we have it, folks. A beautiful, glistening, crackling. This is one from the offset. Cutting quite nice. Juicy. Beautiful. Now onto the direct heat pit. Ooh, nice and tender, actually. Mop sauce did its work. Now that's the sound we were waiting for. Ooh, don't mind if I do. Got the serrated knife out, too, in case we need it, but I think we're gonna be all right. Oh, come on, folks. I gotta say, I'm super impressed with how juicy that looks. And it smells like a whole hog. Look at that crispy skin, love it. I mean, would you just look at it, folks? What's not to like about that? Come on. Oh, so good. I think it's time to dive on in. Gotta say I'm pretty excited about this, folks. I mean, it's just so succulent and so juicy. It's pork belly at its finest with crispy skin on top. I mean, who's gonna say no to that? Oh my God. Mm. That is barbecue heaven right there. That's the direct heat one, by the way. Mm. Right off the bat, it's got that smoky direct heat flavor. You know, it's got that whole hog fat hitting the coals flavor. The mop sauce actually added a lot of flavor to that. There's a lot of tang and sweetness in there. Comes through immediately. Of course, you got the crispy skin, which is perfect on a dish like pork belly. Because it's so fatty and tender, you really need that heterogeneity. Add a little extra crunch in there. Oh, that is phenomenal. Perfectly cooked, nice and juicy, nice and tender. Mm. Oh, mm. this beats every other pork belly I've ever done on the channel by a mile. I mean, talk about a perfect little morsel, am I right? Doesn't even need sauce. We'll get to the sauces in a minute. Oh my God, it's so good. Mm. I mean, just on its own, you got the acid from the sauce, the fattiness from the pork belly, the soft, the crunch. It's really a perfect bite. But let's move on to the offset, which I probably should have started with because there's no way it's gonna compare to the other one. Mostly because I burned the skin, but also because it wasn't hit with any sauces. This is just plain pork belly. Wow, completely different. Mm. Still phenomenal though. Mm. If I ever needed to give someone a lesson in the difference between a direct heat cooker and an offset cooker, this would be it. This has so much more smoky flavor to it. Still cooked incredibly well, nice and juicy, nice and rendered, nice and tender. But the smoke profile is completely different than that you get off of the chud box, but very good still. And the skin, despite my uh, little incident, still came out great. Mm. All right, let's see how these sauces came out, shall we? But first, come on. All right, this one, we're gonna try the Samjang. That stuff is phenomenal. It's actually a very good recipe. That tastes exactly like all the Psalms I've ever had at Korean barbecue joints or Korean restaurants. Very tasty. It's funky, it's salty, it's umami. Pairs perfectly with pork belly. That's amazing. Highly recommend it. Just a little piece of skin in there. Mm. 
It's got such depth to its flavor, you know? It's that fermentation. Can't go wrong with that. I, mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you take anything away from this video, make yourself some of this stuff, or at least buy some pre-made. Perfect dipping sauce for barbecue. Takes it to a whole different level. And then of course, we've got the vermouth jus over here, which is just luxurious to say the least. Good little dip in that. Ooh, yes please. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's rich. Definitely heavy. Very tasty stuff. This would be good on so many different dishes. You know, you got the thick gelatinous richness from the stock cubes, but on top of that, it's kind of cut with the nice onioniness. The dry vermouth kind of adds a nice acidity to it. Again, it's kind of like a white wine sauce. Very tasty. And again, I'll toss a link down below to the uh, Adam Ragusea slash Chef John demi-gloss recipe. Highly recommend it. It's so tasty. And especially because this sauce came together in like five minutes, this would be a great way to up your... Uh, Oh, hey, Carl. Want some pork belly? Several drinks later. <sighs> but I gotta say, folks, this is definitely worth giving a shot. You know, it's fatty, it's juicy, it's smoky, and you got that beautiful crunchy skin on top. This is a crowd pleaser for sure, and a wonderful recipe to have in your arsenal. But without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic crispy skin pork belly. No matter what kind of cooker you've got, I really think this method will work for you. That being said, I really do think the direct heat was the way to go. You know, the extra flavor you got from that mop sauce, the crispy skin on it was just absolutely perfect. It had that whole hog vibe to it. So if you've got a barrel or a smoky mountain or something, I definitely recommend giving this a try. But that's not to poo-poo the offset smoker. It did a fantastic job. And also, if you wanted to conserve on wood, you could smoke it till it's done and then pop it in a really hot oven to finish it off. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. Feel free to drop a comment down below letting me know what you want to see me cook next. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!